welcome back to Triforce. Oh, hmm. Fresh, We're back. Fresh we are morning. back. Welcome, Sips. Welcome. Thanks, Perian. Hello. Thanks welcome so much. Everyone who's listening. Hope everything's going amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. Where you are. Hope hope uh, all of your cupboards are filled uh, with, with food and uh, your wardrobes are filled with with clothes I don't know. With, yeah well i mean for the most part yes okay unconventional uh, wishes but but yeah i'm just i just want everyone to be cozy and happy you oh, know good. i want everyone to be feeling no, good I mean, thanks for that thanks for uh You're welcome thanks for looking out for us that's real real yeah. nice of you that's my job you know? real nice i'm the i'm i'm younger than you guys but i do sometimes feel like um you're Looking not as cool. My elderly mother, you know. Oh, I see. I want to make bold. sure that you know they're they're they've they're not going to fall over, or you know they're not too cold. Us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think yeah. we're likely to fall over? Intriguingly, More... I did almost fall over in the shower today. Really? Thought, yeah. Yes. That's I, a uh, nasty one. If it happens, it is. I, I went to step in. It was that moment when you're you're stepping from the the floor into the shower so you have one foot in the shower one foot on the floor and my foot that was going in the shower just went and went flying and luckily i was able to catch myself but i'm thinking crikey how much longer will i be able to catch myself and how much time well, is exactly left? what happened to me just now on the well, way you almost in. fell over yeah well, it's, well, it's very, very frosty, icy out frosty it's very morning. frosty yeah and yeah. i just my foot just went straight out and i was like doing that thing where you were like dancing uh falling outside what out. can you do but Flax, if you're falling in the shower or thinking about falling in the shower again, you might need to get one of those cords, like those first alert cords <laughs> yeah, I think that I you can pull, you know, like I fall in and I can't get up that one of but those I, ones. What I could do is just tie a long piece of string to Mrs. F's ankle when I go downstairs to the shower. And if there's a problem, I'll just tug on it because she's she's working from home. Oh, so I, I could okay. just tie a piece of thread to her. So uh, yeah. I was walking down the Park Street with my parents the other day. Okay, weekend. It's obviously cold, very frosty. Yeah. And I'm walking side by side with my mother and um and we're having just chatting about stuff, you know. And she um she's she must be coming up to seventy. I'm not I shouldn't really be saying that. But she's 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 getting on, right? Right. Um but she's quite she's quite fit, she's quite fine, it's fine. So she's she's she's, she, she's, she, full of it. she's full of it. Is she, is she butch? <laughs> no, no, but here's I'll tell you why. So I always she, picture your mom to be that one from Orange is the New Black, the one that does herself with the screwdriver. You don't see it happening. <laughs> you know, she's got like the crew cut and stuff. Is that what your mom looks like? Uh, not quite. No, no. Wow. She's, she's not. She's she's got. Um, is she, she very like, sexually charged? Like, is she more like, uh, right. is she more like crazy eyes? Is it crazy eyes? Is she a bit more she's like crazy more like eyes. crazy eyes. Yeah, actually, right. you're right. Right. Um, oh, by the way, Chris, I, I always thought that crazy eyes must have been modeled on like old dirty bastard. Did you yeah, think that? Yeah, a little right. bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, oh, really. Carry on. So we're walking down Park Street, and um, I, uh, there's like this massive, well, those metal like um, hatches, you know, in the in the pavement, right? Which so you mean a manhole? Manhole, but like right. it's a big rectangular one. Anyway, person my mum. Hole, sorry, person hole. Yeah, my mum steps on this thing and just slips straight out and Ouch. like onto her butt, right? Oof, right. That like beautiful, straight down. beautiful butt. Yeah. Okay, um, and. I'm like, oh god, are you okay? But because what? But she actually fell like kind of with one leg under her, so like one leg went out, but one leg went down. So she sort of half fell so onto her leg. Did like the hockey goalie splits? Y yeah, like, like kind of, like, yeah, not not like, not like, um, it wasn't like directly back. She didn't fall backwards. She sort of fell like directly down, right? And then like, and like kind of caught herself under her other leg. Anyway, uh, she was like, f like flat on the floor, and because she just like, from my point of view, just got zoomp and just, like disappeared. Yeah. Right? Mm. I turned around and I, I was like, "Oh, are you okay? Are you okay?" So I was sort of just checking that she wasn't like hurt, like hadn't broken her ankle or like wasn't actually like, because she was obviously dazed. Right. Um, and two people behind us, okay, were walking down. Were they Park just filming Street. it for a TikTok? No, they didn't skip a beat. Right? They. I don't even know who it was. They just grabbed my mother, yeah. one on each shoulder, and pulled her to her feet and just plonked her back down on her feet, okay? And then they walked straight on. And it was so quick that it happened, okay? Jeez. And, and her bag was gone and her phone was gone. Is that the... <laughs> yeah. No. They... No. And, and obviously she, she was her. like, oh, thank you, and like this. And, uh, and they, they looked like, at you. No problem. 
Thanks for the help, Lewis. Yeah, exactly. As if I was. As if I was no, like... no, no. They didn't say it at the time. It'll be in the next mailbag. The other day, I saw Lewis and his mother walking down the street. Well, here you go, bozo. I'm unsubscribing because you didn't help your mom up. It'll be something like that, right? He said he couldn't help her up because it was a tax issue. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, man. Oh, man. Speaking of old uh, mailbag references and stuff, I, I have a, I have an update. Um, do you remember, and listeners, I hope oh. you do too, um, a lad uh, who was in prison. He emailed us. Uh, he was from prison. Yes. He, to, to pique your interest and remind you, he said, he, he mentioned having an Xbox in prison, and we were like, wow, right. Xbox 360. And he told us about the limits on the various games that you could have and stuff Yes, like yeah. So here's an update from him. I, I'm just going to read this verbatim. I am still in prison, which I think is a great opening to an email. Well, I mean, uh, I'd, I'd and in imagine another way, would I'm be, yeah. very sorry, yes, but it's it just the way he just long, said, right? I am still in prison. I think that's, that's how you open an email. And I have answers to the questions you asked in the order you asked them. I've kept it as short as I could. So these are our questions. I don't remember asking these questions, but these are the ones we asked. Did you have a trial? Was one of the questions we asked. No, I did what I was accused of, so I pled guilty. All right. Unlike, unlike in the US, the UK doesn't have plea bargaining where lawyers decide between them what the ultimate charge and sentence should be. Right. Here, here in the UK, the earlier you go guilty, the more time you save the courts and the victims so the judges will apply a discount to your sentence. So this guy got 33% off his sentence as he went guilty as early as possible. Right. And he said that there's no time off for good behavior in the UK. That's right. it. Uh, is it the done thing to talk to other inmates about what they're in for? Everyone talks about what they're in for. Unlike what you see on TV, most people will openly admit their guilt in prison. Those in for crimes that would get them attacked get housed in VP in a VP wing, which is yeah. vulnerable person, right. referred to as the nonce wing. Yes. VPs, <laughs> VPs end up getting attacked there anyway, as even on a nonce wing, there's a hierarchy. Most right. attacks I've seen aren't offense related, but come from what he calls the three Ds. Debt, oh God. drugs, and disrespect. Yes. Right. Yeah. You have Given to be that, a you respect. Gotta respect. You, you, gotta, you have to respect. respect. Yeah. Oh, and of you, you cannot be in debt and you cannot do drugs either. Indeed. Given that you're in an open prison, is there any violence? And are there still a few nutters about? He says there's very little violence in open prisons compared to closed prisons. In closed, I would witness fights almost every day. I've seen multiple juggings. Jesus. They are not fun. No. Most, no, most people no. in open conditions don't want to lose being able to see their families once a month, so they behave. That said, people do get sent back to closed conditions if they break the rules, but 99% of the time it's because they've been caught with contraband. Right, right. And what's that? A mobile phone? Drugs. Drugs. Th oh, it's just right. stuff you're not allowed to have. Yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> of all the stuff you find on the prisoners in, uh, in Prison Architect. Yes. Um, yeah, all those things. All the contraband. Uh, a syringe, a dagger, a yeah, hammer. A what vial of find? poison. <laughs> yeah, a vial of poison. How do you think... I think this must have been... I'm going to guess this was Lewis's question. How do you think wearing a kimono full-time would go down for you personally? Uh, he says, unfortunately, there's a policy that dictates what you're allowed to wear, and kimonos are on the banned list. Right. Alongside, alongside things like football shirts and clothes that would let you appear as if you're an officer. For example, a white white shirts, black trousers, and so no kimonos for us. Well, I Sad. think the kimono would be unfair because, like, if you're talking about hierarchies and stuff as well, I figure mm. whoever's wearing the kimono has the balls to wear the kimono in the first place, so they must be pretty high yeah. up and in Given charge most right? of, i mean they, they're pretty it's a pretty open garment so you would definitely be able it to is see quite, it is like a villain well. garment as well though right it is like a little you, villainous you are you are uh, pretty much announcing to the world that you are a villain because you're wearing the kimono and in jail maybe people will see that as like the ultimate flex you know indeed yeah so that's probably why they had to be banned it makes sense honestly i think that do makes you sense. get to choose what to wear you have to wear prison issue clothes if you're on basic which is the behavioral categories are basic, standard, and enhanced. But if you're standard or enhanced, you can wear clothes you brought in with you or that you've purchased through a prison clothes supplier. Mm. Tracksuits and trainers are prison currency in closed conditions, not so much in open. Right. What country are you in and what level of prison? I'm in England in a DCAT open prison. Right. Prison categories go from double A, which is the most violent and publicly recognizable criminals, to A, which is high security, B, which is local dispersal and remand prisoners, and C is the majority of prisoners, and D is open conditions. So he's in a DCAT. Right. What jobs are you forced to do? 
No one is forced to work. But if you want to maintain enhanced status and get the most benefits, like being allowed an Xbox 360, you need to be employed. In open editions, you're able to work outside of the prison in manual labor or production line jobs. A friend of mine works in a duck processing factory, for example. Wow. Wages for in-prison jobs like cleaners and education orderly, orderlies are 20 pounds a week. Yeah, it's not a lot. No. It's external like two packs jobs. of smokes. Like, it's, right. it's nothing. E external jobs are paid at national minimum wage, but are taxed heavily. Right. And what is the food like? Oh my God, food is much better in open conditions than it is in closed. Most people in closed get food poisoning, and I don't miss the questionable rice puddings or rat droppings in the spaghetti twice in one week. Most prison kitchen budgets are tiny. They get less than two pounds per prisoner per day to Jesus. cover three meals. To cover three meals. Uh, that's shocking. That's absolutely shocking. That's well, pretty shocking, but... Thank you uh, for the Mr. Mr. Decap prisoner. Uh, I'm not going to say your name. I can't remember if I did last time. I'm going to avoid it just for, just in case. Y yeah, uh, but no. But if we have any more questions, uh, you know, we, we should shout them out to... Uh, we can to shout... Out. Man, it's interesting stuff, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Fascinating and terrifying. It's terrifying, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would never want to go to, to jail. And luckily, no. I, I don't uh, regularly break the law either. And uh, it's not, uh, it, it's legal tax avoidance where I live, okay? It's not uh, against the law. <laughs> so don't even think about coming at me with that one. Uh, there's no way I'm going to jail. And if I'm going to jail, put me in one of those open ones. They sound a little bit better than the other ones. Yeah, actually, that's a question. Can you, do, can you ever just go straight to open? Or do yeah. they always send you to DCAT, or to CCAT? Or somewhere else, see how you are, and then let you out if you're if you're good. That's yeah, one question. I, I don't know. I mean, actually, I know in America they have like put together look, another list of questions. Jail, right? Maybe this can be a regular thing. We have so many prison questions. You know, I we, mean, the dude's got a lot of time on his hands, so we could just he uh, does, yeah, yeah, we put the questions together. <laughs> you got yeah. like a pen, prison pen pal. Yeah, yeah, prison pen pal. Yeah, well, one of us is going to end up trying to marry you. That's I'm going to marry him, yeah, because I'm so intrigued by this, and actually, the whole thing just really. I like a bad boy. Got to say, I, I love a bad boy. Me too. <laughs> you know, God. nice. You do. Nice. Um, a good so, update. Great update. Thank yeah, you very I just, much. I thought, I thought that would be good. I wanted to wanted to read that. Yeah, one no, it's interesting. I I hadn't thought about it honestly since the last time, but when you mentioned it, I was like, yeah. This is something I, I could definitely listen to for five minutes. So thank you very good. much. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thanks for that. You're welcome. That's, that's good. That was really nice. So my mum was fine, by the way. Um, she does yoga, my mum. Oh, she's sorry. A yeah. Oh, yeah. She's sorry, back a, to your mum. She's yeah, been yeah. a yoga teacher for a long time. So like falling. Uh, so she's, she's just, probably familiar with those moves. You know, I think like... she honestly, if I'd fallen, I think I probably would have been more injured than she was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from falling over on the ground, yeah. I felt like we went ice skating a few years ago, and I, I, I had, I used to ice skate a lot when I was a young, a young man. Right. Um, go to the ice rink. Anyone in Bournemouth that's old will remember the old ice rink in Bournemouth. I thought you were going to say that you, if anyone who's older remembers seeing me at the ice rink, <laughs> <laughs> there I was every weekend. I'd go oh, down there with the. Uh... It's him. No, it was. <laughs> oh it, it was on Westover Road in uh, in Bournemouth. Um, they they spoke about turning it into a mega nightclub. For a long time, but it's just been empty for fucking decades, as far as I can tell. If they've done something with it, go ahead and let me know. Nice. But um, I go ice skating all the time, and there would be a point where everyone, you know the way, if you go to the ice rink, everybody's just skating around in a circle and holding hands and chatting. It was mainly a way for, for people to flirt with each other and, and for people to go somewhere on a date and all the rest of it. I get right, it. Right. And for the youngest of us, it was just a chance to skate around because it was, it was fun. Yeah, sure. And they would have a, a period every sort of hour where it was like fast people only on the ice. So all the young lads would just fucking go absolutely as fast as they could. Because obviously, when the ice is busy, you can't really build up a head of steam. You you have to skate at the pace of everybody else. Otherwise, it's going to be an accident. So they would put on some, some dance music, change the lighting a bit, and you'd zoom around as fast as you could. I used to love that. I, I rarely fell over. I really liked ice skating. But we went a couple of years ago, maybe four years ago. Yeah. One minute on the ice, and I had a massive fall. And I came down so hard on my back, I felt awful. And the kids were like, "Oh my god, Daddy fell over! You lost I want to your get mojo. off the ice. It's dangerous." I just hadn't done it in such a long time. Yeah, I, I, it was so bad. But oh my god, it fucking hurts. I'd forgotten how hard you come down on the ice. It, I literally did the, the yeah. cartoon pratfall where I went up in the air a bit and then came back down. It was fucking horrible. Yeah, you kicked your legs out and were like, yeah. "Oh fuck!" Yeah, I, I. I could exa I could see that exact shit happening as well to me. Like I I went ice skating occasionally, and I I, I think if I went now, I would just 
be so scared. I'd be like one of those people you see like le- leaned over like with your hands like trying to like touch the ice, you know, like like yeah. crouched over like a gorilla. You do like that that crouching arms out m- maneuver as well on the on the ice skates, don't you? Yeah, but you can get the penguin. They have the you. penguin for little kids to hold on to. It's like a little penguin. It's True, about yeah. comes up to a, it, for us it would come up to about just above our knees, I guess. But for little kids, it's just the right height. And they, it's like a big plastic penguin with ice skates, but it's heavy, and they hold on to it and shuffle along to get used to the idea. I think that was quite good. It, it yeah. kind of reminded me of um, my uh, my kids. You wouldn't obviously... see that at a hockey game, though, would you? Do you <laughs> no. know what I mean, the goalie is coming out here with uh, one of those support <laughs> penguins. <You must> be <laughs> new. <laughs> he's a transfer from soccer, <laughs> so he's a little bit unsteady on the ice. Yeah. Um, when my kids, uh, obviously, they can both ride a bike, but my youngest just wasn't taking to it. I couldn't figure it out. Um, but the eldest, she she sort of took to it a little better. I mean, my youngest is a bit more cautious. Um, and so she mm-hmm. wasn't willing to just push off and go for it. Whereas yeah. my youngest was like, let's go for it. Um, I think those little balance bikes that you can get kids, which is just a bike, yeah, which is like no motor at all. It's just a wooden bike or even just, I guess it's not always just wooden, but I've only seen the wooden ones. You just go along in it with your legs. You just push yourself along. But it gets them used to the idea of steering and balancing sure, yeah. and, and being on the bike. So I took her to these bike lessons. It was a one-time lesson, one lesson, guaranteed success. Right. And we went, dropped her off. A couple of hours later, come back. She's riding the bike around with all these other kids who couldn't do it either. Oh, guaranteed fantastic. Guaranteed success. My, wow. Uh, all your money back. My, uh, well, not my youngest anymore, but my, my, my middle daughter, mm. when she was learning how to ride her bike, we thought, oh, we're going to have to get her training wheels and stuff like that. She just hopped on her bike and went because like, she's right. just trying to keep up with my son all the time. Right. So, right. Like, yeah. Yeah. He was, he was already like pretty good at riding his bike. So she just hopped on hers and she was just like, yeah, let's go. We didn't have to teach her nothing. She just she just ready to go. Yeah, well, no training if you want wheels, some tips, nothing. I watched some of this guy's lesson. The main thing is to get, and some of the kids there were quite old kids. They were like 11, 12, and they just clearly just like embarrassed sure. with all these little five and six year olds. But yeah. you know, fair play to you them. Gotta for learn, you just got to learn, though. You got to learn. Yeah. Well, this is the same thing going skiing, though, right? Like even when I was like a teenager, you know, learning to snowboard or ski. There were literally four-year-olds mm-hmm. running rings around me, and God. it made, and I was like tottering along like an idiot. Imagine what it feels <laughs> like now to learn to ski at like forty. I you know, know. Oh, it'd be awful. The pro- the problems of the one percent. It's crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the frightful embarrassment. Yeah, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed when I fell off my water polo horse. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? There was a twelve-year-old t- chap there laughing at me. <laughs> I barely oh show my face at that evening social. It was quite embarrassing. We did have a laugh about it later, of course. But, <laughs> but so I think tip one is is get the kid on the bike, just just pushing themselves along with their legs. Get them used to just moving the bike and then just letting them coast a little bit and balance it without any pedaling, like no pedaling, just getting used to balancing. And they went around and around in a circle like that for ages. And once they get bored of doing that and it feels like second nature, then you can start... With the pedaling and stuff, I thought it was it was interesting. Anyway, carry mm. on. No, I, um, I had nothing more to say. No, he was I done. See. He just wanted oh. to. He just wanted to to fit in there that he's She's been fine. skiing before. <laughs> I reckon she'd be good at skiing. My mum, she'd be she'd pick it up fast. How old can you imagine the embarrassment of a sixty plus year old woman <laughs> <laughs> having a tumble down the slope? <laughs> oh man. Stop um, it. How old is your mom now? She's got she's 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 got to be get, getting on a little bit, right? She sure, yeah. She's quite old, yeah. She's I don't know, thirty one. Thirty one already, yeah, man. Like where does the time go? It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exciting stuff. My um, uh, my middle daughter who has the uh, who was uh, was good uh, at riding uh, her bike from uh, from the get go has been off school. She's got a little bit of impetigo. Ever had oh. uh, ever had an outbreak oh. of that before, Flex? That's the, the thing you get like on your neck and stuff like it's that. It's just it's like all... a it's like a little skin uh yeah. complaint. But it, it, a I buddy mean, of it mine can, had it. A it can get ago. it can get uh there's degrees of it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not like super threatening. It's just uh, It's contagious, isn't it? It's very contagious, yeah, when it's uh when it's going. When it's just starting out, but um, well, I mean, otherwise it's it's okay. No, it, yeah, a buddy of mine had that. My friend Lee had that. Um, 
in Patigo a few years ago. We teased them about it a lot, of course. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things. Sounds yeah. like a sounds like a thing that vampires would have. You yeah, know? well, they look a little bit. I mean, they, it, it's 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 weird because when you first uh, when when you get it, it's it's not too bad. Like there's like a couple of little sores or whatever. But then um, as it's getting better. It, it looks worse, you know, like it, it starts to it starts to get all like dry and crusty, but like the sores just look Ew. bigger. Yeah, it's, mm. it's really weird. Ew. Yeah, but yeah, it can God, spread that's... around and stuff, too. I think she had it oh, like well, on the back of her was... arm, but because she was scratching it and then touching her face and stuff. It's just it's everywhere. Oh, it's, I don't know. It sounds it's, gross. You I thought s- it was. I, it's gross. I thought it, it is pretty I gross. Thought it was yeah. like, a, oh, God, I thought it was like more like a, one of those like things that is like a a blood disease that no, makes no. you it looks like very uh, pale. it looks like eczema like it just looks like really oh, bad eczema does it? yeah and, oh, is it uh, infectious it's a bit infectious yeah if you if oh, you uh, if you had like a like a graze on you and uh and you were in contact with uh, my daughter for some reason mm. uh you would probably get it you know it's a, it is it's pretty it's it's pretty contagious but luckily, right. none of us have gotten it because we're not mm. uh, covered in cuts it, and lesions. It could be so. called school sores. And I recommend anyone listening to this does not look it up because the, the, <laughs> no, the scams are up. gross. It's nasty, uh, yeah. It's, it's gross, actually. Right? My yeah. daughter's is not is is like a milder case. It's not as nasty. But yeah, if you look it up, there's like... This is the kind of shit you're having to deal with just regularly as a dad. and shit like that. Like, yeah, it's pretty gross. Fucking hell. Yeah. What else has happened in your lives this uh, week? Anything uh, interesting? Uh, uh, any, the, the baby is like on the verge of actually talking. Lots of like Ooh. babbling, baby babbling, you know. Ready to Lots go. Lots of like dad, 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 like loud, dad, you know, like you know, dad, 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 ma, 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 ma stuff. So yeah. she's just like on the like verge. Like Lady Gaga. Now. Yeah, <laughs> she'll be she'll be coming downstairs. Uh, so well, she's not actually walking down the stairs yet, thank God. But uh, at some point, she'll be coming down. She'll be like, "Mummy, good." please have you know what i mean like uh it'll be fully fully talking yeah asking for stuff and whatever and then we'll have three people asking for stuff all the damn time so there you go. <laughs> looking forward to that oh, that's the oh wow the that's good what yeah. do you think what do you think uh her first word will be what were the first words of your other kids by the way uh, it's almost always it's, dada. it's always dada yeah it's the it's easiest easier thing say. for them to say yeah. right so that's technically i suppose technically that's her first word even though yeah it's it's like babbling that you can make out and believe yeah, that it's yeah. something. I, I would like to know appear, uh, in in other languages is Dada always the first thing? It probably say? is. I, yeah. I think so, and I think that's the reason. And Mama, I think that's the reason why that it's called that. Um, Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's but, because but, uh, we also say, "Can you say Dada?" and "Can you say Mama?" Like I say that you know those are the kind of things you say to to babies. Yeah. And I wonder if they pick that up. So I wonder if you're like, are Chinese babies saying dada? Or are they saying something else? Yeah, I think so they probably are, yeah. If you've got a different uh, different language there, let us know. I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'd like to know. Mailbag us. I'm not going to look it up. On that I just want to no, read no, we're what not the people look have up. to say. No. No. Because um, the people yeah. will be divided on this. She's... I'm still getting emails about the whole which chromosome baldness is inherited on. And there is no consensus. All oh, right. None. I'm getting it from all angles and none of them agree with each other. So I'm just... So another I'm thing out. Another thing she says a lot is yeah. She says yeah. yeah. So yeah. like you'll say, hey, do you want to put your coat on? You want to go in the car? Yeah. Yeah. She just said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty cute. It's so funny. It I love it funny, at that yeah. age. Yeah. It's a great age. When they age. do that thing where they go, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. They start going <laughs> really like, they go crazy with it. She goes like all high pitched. Yeah. She was, uh, da, 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 we took a video da, 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 of her. She, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't paying attention to any of us in the room at the time. So she was just in her own little world. She was laying on the couch and she had a book, but she was like pretending to read it, but it was upside yeah. down. But, then, but she was like, reading it out loud using the only words she has so she was like that 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 da, 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 da. Like, and then she'd, she'd search the page and start oh, doing man. it again it was really good oh that's so funny yeah, they're, they're oh, so God. pure at that age yeah, it's just they are, oh, yeah, it's, it's so funny it's hilarious it's 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 like a little copy a copy bot isn't it yeah, yeah. obviously she can't try not she, she can't um, she things. can't talk to you but she she'll point at stuff that she wants she understands everything that you say like it's insane, like how 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 much she can understand without actually being able to 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 speak or or ask for anything. But she points I mean, they just at stuff watch us and... all day, right? Like yeah, their life is watching. It's yeah, the it's other wild. people in their family. Yeah. So it, it really is incredible. I mean, we've had other kids, so like it, it, this shouldn't be like uh, as much of a revelation. But it it it, it never ceases to amaze me. Like uh, yeah. it, it's it is really incredible to watch uh, a baby start to uh to develop into like you know a toddler and then 
uh, and then into like a small kid or whatever. I even like hey, with my eleven year old now. Well, I'm sure Flax, you can you can relate to this. Yeah, having uh, having having two two kids a- around that age or like a little bit older. Yeah, this kind of stuff that he's coming up with now and the the levels of sass are just like off oh the my God. charts. Man, it's unbelievable. It's just crazy. Like you yeah. ask it, like he, he'll sarcastically reply to things now. It's just like what oh, the yeah. hell? <laughs> I mean, they they make them fun of us now. Yeah. Uh, the other day, you know, you know the the when people say it it do be bussing. Yeah. That this pizza would be bussing. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Mrs. F said bustling by mistake. Right. And she also said busting. So the kids say that to her all the time. So they're making fun of her lack of skills. I may have spoken about this last week. I no, like I don't think you have myself. actually. This is all new to me. I don't. Well, think they. I've... So now they, they put on a fake mum mum voice. They're like, oh, this pizza do be bustling. <laughs> and like making fun of her. Oh my God, uh, Like man. that. Yeah, they're brutal. Jesus. Uh, they, you know what? We, we all, all three of us got into trouble. Does um, that make your wife Sag? That's another thing that they say nowadays <laughs> as well, right? I hate Sag, man. Madge. I fucking hate that. Are they, um, is she Madge or Sag? They, 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 they don't say Sag. Oh, they say Pog good. a lot, but yeah, they don't say They Sag. say Pog. Um, oh my they God. do say Pog, yeah. Um, so Mrs. F went away last weekend with her mates. Uh, they had like a, a mum's weekend away. Right. Uh, which was great. And it was just us. Now on Saturday morning, being being Twickenhamites, my, my girls go horse riding, right? They, right? they do horse riding on a Saturday. Um, and it means getting up fucking early on a Saturday to get them out yeah. there for it. Friday evening, Mrs. F has already left. She's away. The kids are grizzling about having to go the next day. Right. Because it's fucking cold and wet and all sure. the rest of it. Yeah. And I was like, if you guys don't want to go, let me know. And they're like, we don't want to go. Right. I was like, okay. I said, the thing is, we cannot tell mummy. No, that you haven't gone. We have to maintain the I subterfuge. Know. It... And they were like, "We can do that." Of course, within two days <laughs> oh of her return, God. they told we've been her. rumbled. Yeah, yeah they, oh, we've been no. rumbled. you didn't go yeah. horse riding, did you? No, we didn't. No, they could. You just they sat around buckled. and drank coke and ate chocolate all day, didn't you? Yes, we did. Yes, <laughs> yes, just... that is exactly what we did. Um, but so it was. Uh, yeah, Mrs. F just rumbled us, and she texted me on. Well, she WhatsApp me. I am fucking furious with you. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, shit. shit. My youngest comes home from school and she's got, she looks at me and she goes, she knows. I was like, I know that she knows. And we were just like, what are we going to do? She's Damn. like, did you apologize? I was like, of course. And both the kids were like, was mommy angry with you? I was like, yeah, she was very angry with me. <laughs> but then they were like, I'm so sorry, Dad. I was like, it's you have my to fault. live in a new house now. Yes, I'm going to have yes, to. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. This is, Your life is changing I'm, I'm right leaving. now. <laughs> this is uh, unbelievable, unprecedented, but, uh, really. But... They were apologizing to me for letting me down with their lying. And I was like, kids, I'm the responsible adult here. I'm meant to be. I let you down. So I apologize to you for putting you in this situation. But they're like, no, it was like a, we were all in on it. I was like, I know. I felt like we bonded, but at the same time, we bonded about all collectively doing a really stupid, shitty thing. Are you guys at the point now wife. where you can kind of like joke about it? Like, has, has, no, no, oh, no, right. no, no, You can't be no, like, oh, look maybe... that time we didn't go horse riding. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. No, no, no we can't do that. that yeah. There it's would be a, a dark look if we did that. I'm Shit, you okay. that. It's nice it when you get to the like, point, though, where you can. Like you bonded, yeah. though. It feels like they almost like, um, you took one for them, right? Do you think they respect you more now that you said they didn't have to go horse riding? Oh, yeah. you feel like maybe okay. more more respect? I don't know how long it'll last. No, they just know that I'm a soft touch. Yeah. Like They both give me the puppy dog eyes, and they know how to, oh, please, Daddy, don't make us go out in the cold. And yeah. I'm just like, okay, I won't make you. Because yeah. I'm just a big softy, but... Mrs. F is like you're going. I, I, for me, it's not even being a. I, I, I get. I like. I'm. I, I kind of fill that role in the house as well. But it's not even me being a softy. It's me being lazy. It's like, oh, <laughs> what's this? You don't want to go horse riding? Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I mean, I don't want to drive you there either. So, uh, I mean, that's part of it for yeah. sure. Because it would mean getting up at seven in the morning on yeah, a Saturday. That sucks. Fuck yeah. like that. But equally, it, you know. I, they they really didn't want to go. No. So we were all united. None of us wanted them to go. But um, and the other thing is is like Mrs. F is like make sure you use that uh, quince or whatever. What is it called? Corn mints to make some bolognese while I'm away. And we're like oh, we yeah. will. And then we, as soon as she's out of the door, it's in the bin, and we get a pizza in. Or you something. did. You <laughs> threw all that mince away. You could have sent it to Lewis. He loves it. He can't yeah, get out of that. Post him some corn mints.
Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your laptop out of the coffee shop while you run to the bathroom. Yeah. Most of the time, you're probably fine. What if one day, someone what if it will come is, out of the bathroom? What if it is horrendous diarrhea and you're in there for a lot longer than you planned? Yeah, you come back, right. someone's emailed terrible things to your mum, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They've looked at all your details. Exactly. So every time you connect to an unencrypted network in a in a hotel, airport, you know, or a coffee shop, you can, you're giving away your data. Yeah. And it, it could, it could, people could hack you. So protect yourself by using a VPN. Uh, I use a VPN at home on my computer, my phone. I, you can get it on your TV. Uh, you can, you can change your country and access different, different regions. It doesn't take much technical knowledge for someone to get your data, and your ISPs will also be using that. So keep your privacy and protect yourself with ExpressVPN today. Keep it secret. At keep it safe. ExpressVPN.com slash trifles. E X P R E W S VPN.com slash trifles. You get an extra three. Months free. Oh my god. Uh, if you if you go to expressvpn.com slash trifles. And yeah, I, I use it, I like it, it works fast. I don't even notice it's on. It boots up automatically. I recommend ExpressVPN. Uh alright everyone, please support that. Expressvpn.com slash trifles. On with the show. So Sam's put together some um news for me, uh or for us. Right. Uh, do you want oh, to read it? Yeah, oh, go, yeah, so, go for it. Yeah, please. First thing on the list, NVIDIA broadcast, right? Uh, streaming software has updated now and there's an option where Oh the eye you can contact thing. Make eye contact directly with the camera even if you're looking elsewhere. Oh my god, man. What? That's gonna it that's is, a game changer. It is astonishing. So you can what? look around. So the idea is it's supposed to be for if you're like reading off a script on the other monitor or you're like, um, you know, it's basically to try and like keep your eyes in the same place rather than be obvious that you're really. I noticed that as well. Right. Like if I'm watching the news or whatever, I can see them not quite looking at me. You know what I mean? Like they're not quite yeah, looking at the camera. Off the Just, also cue. Exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, those things are fascinating. We had one on the shoot recently. What they have is they actually have the camera lens. Um, it's like it's like one of those trick Disney mirror things where the mirror the, the words are in front. Of the camera lens but the camera can't see them right right so the camera is shooting through a screen where the mm. words are yeah that's yeah. amazing um so yeah so that way you are directly looking and your eyes should only go to the left and right of the camera lens rather than like above or below or to the left or to the right it's, a, it's obviously really clever but but yeah like deep faking is the the next solution uh the next best solution to that if you're a, a VTuber and you want, or a YouTuber and you want to make an apology video, if you're a VTuber, you don't even need it because obviously your eyes are just deep faked already, right? But um, if you're there like, was a, if you're there like, was big yeah. uh, big drama in the Tarkov community recently that resulted in uh, in a lad having to do an apology video. Really? It was, yeah. yeah, it was a really really lousy apology video. <laughs> really? Um, I, I, yeah, it was funny, but um, I think for now people would be, would be able to see it, and I, I guess it's it's for professional use but uh, i thought that was interesting news um michael bay mm. in oh i heard is, about this is, is is facing charges in italy for murdering a pigeon um right. or like killing a pigeon while filming a so movie i, I only saw the headline because i don't like michael bay so i didn't read it yeah. but i saw that he killed a pigeon or he's facing charges do you know anything about the circumstances? Did he like okay, walk so up and stamp on a pigeon? Well, or? the story goes that while they were filming, someone using a dolly, which is the things that move the cameras around, yeah, yeah. accidentally like hit and killed a homing pigeon, right? Okay. So the evidence of this is a, a paparazzi. Who is responsible who for that? Is it the key grip? On the floor. Or I don't is know. it the grip boy? So, so basically, What's... it's not. Even if it was. <laughs> even it wasn't if it me, it was, was the key grip. Even if it was, as the story goes, it wasn't. It was like one of the. It was just a, a on set accident, I assume. Right. But apparently, he's saying that it was just a paparazzi photo that was on the ground. It had died unrelated cause, uh, but because homing pigeons are protected, uh, there's like they're never going to be like a I warrant mean, out. What the, for well, Alec Baldwin shot and killed somebody on set, <laughs> and uh, I don't think anything happened to him. So I don't think Michael Bay's got much to worry about, honestly. Like okay, the way we solved that going, one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm not laughing at the fact that it was a tragic, tragic accident. I'm sorry, but that was just very funny. I'm not well, making light of this. No, no, me neither. Day, I'm just, say, just pointing it um, out. Sorry. I, I don't mean to match offend. Match of the day was interrupted after Gary oh, Lineker. Yeah. Oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> I, I saw so this, there, yeah. There was, so they were, I saw this on Reddit as well. There was, um, they were just doing a normal match of the day, boring old broadcasting. 
and some guy had sellotaped a mobile phone to the back of the set. I think Obviously he's like he a prank the set YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, he claims to be a fucking prankster. He's, he's just a boring dickhead. He's a sure, prank whatever. YouTuber. And obviously his phone had like, it was like a really shitty ringtone of like sex sounds. But yeah. like kind of hard to make out, honestly. It was like, ah, ah. It sort of sounded, it was like, it was like, it was kind of bad, right? Yeah. No, no sex teeny. sounds I've ever heard. Yeah. Well, it just didn't sound a woman so repetitive. Fun. Yeah. And it was kind of bad. They should have been, get off. Get off. I've got a headache. Yeah. Get off. Get off. <laughs> Shut up. Get off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Um, Jesus, sorry. I can't. I'm distracted. But no, Gary Lineker handled it like a pro. And was like, oh, someone's played some weird sounds. I don't know if you can hear that. It like, must be some sort of joker. Yeah. And I don't know. He just he he was like, really he he really handled it well. Um, and everyone looked. He he managed. They managed to spin it so it was like because he tweeted afterwards. So I imagine actually inside he was furious. Okay, and I would be. Um, but maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just like hard about. I think you got I think you got to just roll with the punches when stuff like that happens, right? Because I, I wish, I wish. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to be able to, but I think inside I would still be fuming. You would? No, but I don't think he would be. He fuming. put out like a, funny, a tweet though. afterwards that was like, you know, this is what happened. We found this thing sellotaped to the back of the set. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. And it was quite, quite my, funny. My favorite part of it is that I think he was trying to throw to Alan Shearer, who was standing yes. on some gantry wearing a flat cap. Looking yes. like classic Shearer stone faced, boring bastard. And this is going on, and he's trying to throw to Shearer. Shearer's just like, like just standing Can't there. Can't hear the sex sounds. He's just, just looking he's just deadly on. serious because he's, you know, oh, there's a bit of goal here at Leicester. Fucking who gives a shit? Come on. <laughs> yeah. The people who are watching that are a certain, a certain population. Anyway, uh, the other thing on this news thing is so apparently, this is the thing that happens. If you have like these leaf piles, right? Like big leaf piles that mm. decompose. Yeah. They will create nitrous os- oxide. Yeah, they which can is bur- this- burst into flames as well, can't they? Yeah, which is like laughing gas. I think. I think so. Anyway, like what spores. you're supposed to do is apparently you're supposed to like periodically stir them, right? Right. If you have a huge one, <laughs> but uh, the deer in the local area have learned that if they dig into the leaf pile, they can take a huge breath of get a little buzz. nitrous oxide and get fucked up on it. And there's videos of them frolicking around like <laughs> acting crazy like, like the teenagers in my area doing that. those balloons i love that man <laughs> setting fire to things well speaking of that actually the other day um there was a bus on fire in bristol good god uh, on the way in and it was like properly smoke pouring out of it um you know like a bomb had gone off or something really where really, was it right up into the air just outside the uh, train station um, was there like, if only there was someone with the capacity to push this bus into a into some water. Where's the Bristol <laughs> pusher when you need it? <laughs> yeah. God, my, my calling, I missed it. But yeah, I wonder what that was. I thought it was, because it was right at the top at the back of the bus, right? It looked like where the kids would be sitting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I, I sh- there's no, there's, there's no... Are you um, trying to say that some kids did this? Is this where this is leading? You're you're just assuming well, that some kids lit the bus on fire. Well, it's like a gas-powered bus, right? Right. And the I don't I think they have the engine on the back though, right? On buses. Actually, I don't know where the engines are. Uh, sorry, is there any bus experts? Right in. Send the, the, stuff the, the engine is, we need is at to know. the back. The engine is yeah, at the I think back. So. Because but that's I, where you've got. Um, I, I mean, I'm I'm 99 sure it's at the back because first of all, if you look at a bus, there's no room at the front for the engine. It's a big engine. Yeah. And it doesn't have the truck style front to it. It doesn't have like if a. If you hood. look at the back of a bus, yeah. for one thing, if you sit at the back of the bus, you can fucking hear the engine, and that's where whenever they break down, they open that flap at the back, and the driver stands there for a second, looking like he's going to be able to fix it. But it's more to just symbolise yeah. the bus has broken down. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure. You know the I'm like bus is broken down. Ninety nine percent sure on the certainly on a London bus, the the engine's at the back. Yeah, and that's not what's on fire. It's like above the engine, right. mm. like it's it's like the windows at the back. But that's where the kids, like the naughty kids, would sit. Yeah, right? top well, deck no, at not the back. Anymore. Well, just saying. Good, um, you solved that one. So they're being they're being. I'm assuming they're looking for some. Well, it's, the thing is, though, it happened at like ten. So a.m. or feels, p.m. 10 a.m. Mm. So oh. it feels like maybe like kids really would have young kids. Off at least an hour before that, right? 
Maybe. But maybe. I mean, they, if they're like, shoving paper and bits of rubbish down some vent hole that goes onto the radiator or something down there and that catches fire, all the rubbish down there could be that. Could be, yeah. Maybe could there's be, like all that. their love notes. They need to get rid of the love notes that they pass yeah. around to each other. And that's do what's happening. Do people do that anymore? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think they just Snapchat each other pictures of their dicks, don't they? Isn't that, isn't well, that that's a big really part of it now, it? too. But I think there's some I think there's some, some poetry involved as well sometimes. Romance probably isn't dead, Sips. Yeah, I, I should hope. It's that, not. Uh, people might it's thriving. A little... It's thriving. You just, you I would little... love to get a love letter again. I remember I, I getting them. Well, that's what did you ever get those? Uh, did you ever get <laughs> those letters, letters where it's like, uh, I really, I really like you. Do you want to go out with me? And then there's like a box that says yes or no. Yes, yes, no. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I love those. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. like the feedback form. Yeah, yeah. I love you. Do you love me? Yes, no. Of course, you always take yes because you know, yeah. Who's who takes? You no? must reply. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I love like it's that that stuff that kids do when they they need you to reply as well. It's like yeah. uh, immediately they almost like make it as easy as possible with like stamped just yeah. envelope. But like <laughs> I think they still do yeah. love notes, but I think there's I think there's a, a a cut off much sooner than when we were kids because one thing I have noticed is that a lot of my son's friends at school who are all ten, eleven years old. One thing that a lot of them got for Christmas this year was a uh, phone. So I think uh, once they're on oh, wow. once they're on their phones, there that it's 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 kind of done, you know. Mm-hmm. It seems early that to be getting feel a phone like a as Christmas well. Present. No, but okay. um, but then uh, can I just so- say uh, talking about school? Sorry, Sips. Um, uh, go, go, go ahead. No, I was going to just say that some some of them actually um, seemed a, a little bit like uh, like regretted asking for a phone because it turns out it's not as great as they thought it was going to be. <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think they would have rather um, just actually had something fun. I was going to talk about school. <laughs> my my yeah. youngest had a, a story about her music teacher the other day that I thought was quite funny. It reminded me of being at school. Um, I think for, from the kids' perspective, the teachers are like these monolithic creatures who don't have emotions and just turn up, do the job, and go home, and they don't get stressed or anything like that. And they, they Yeah, don't do... they're like stone right. giants. Yeah. But yeah. of course... As an adult now, the idea of working with kids all day, you realize, fucking hell, what a stressful, bloody that job. That suck, yeah. And this music teacher had clearly had enough on this particular day. Um, and the kids were all doing music. And for some reason, they're doing something to do with piano. They all have to play the piano in this lesson. Only two kids in the class have had piano lessons, which is a sign of the times, really. I'm sure back in the in the olden days, most people would, you know, especially in a middle class school, would would have some kind of fucking piano tutoring or something. I certainly remember lots of kids did. Anyway, yeah. she's there and she's like, just play the C chord. And they were like, what's a C chord? She's getting anger and angry with these kids for not knowing how to play chords on a piano. Right. And I wow. thought, if you can't play the piano, just shouting at people to play the so-and-so chord isn't going to make them be able to play it. Like, it's not... You can't look at a piano and know. No. Oh, C chord, of course. Like you can't work it out. No, you have to. You have to like decipher that pretty right. early on, right? Like I could imagine, like someone who's never looked at a piano before wouldn't know what no. that was at all. Right? I mean, if you were given a piano and told, "All right, for the next month, it's just you and the piano. You got to figure out how to if play." If you a give few someone things. a fucking guitar and say, "Play the C chord on that," I'd be like, <laughs> right. "Here you go. Like, play smoke on the water. Right? What? <laughs> smoke like, on the water, <laughs> motherfucker. Smoke on the water. Let's go. <laughs> Come on." <laughs> How many times have I said "play smoke on the water"? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just thought that was that was a, a collapse in in uh, in teaching from that teacher. But I just also thought I bet she just had one of those days and was just <laughs> at the end of a end of a tether. My son got a a, a kazoo in his stocking and he's been playing that. And one uh, oh my god, one song that he really likes to play on his kazoo for some reason is uh, is that one. Uh, I'll be riding shotgun on the hot like, but he, yeah, on the kazoo, right? <laughs> on the ca- you do know you just basically kazoo is you just humming something through a yes through a tube, right? It's not like he's playing. You're not playing it, but it's like in it's in my head now because it's just like constant. Like I'm not talking about a little kazoo here. I'm talking about like five solid hours of kazoo, like it just, oh my god, <laughs> of the same yes, chord. Yes, do it. You should teach I'll him smoke on the water. Shotgun, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't even. I didn't even realize he liked that song. But I guess I don't even know if he does like it. I think it's one of those things that you know, it's just a tune that he's got in his head or whatever. So that's what he what he plays. But yeah, it sounds good and it's familiar and it works. But the the joy of a kazoo is you can literally be tone like as long as you can 
Dharma tune, you could play that tune, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it's a you kazoo, have to right? learn the, the keys. You have to, like, you know, have dex, dexterous fingers. Yeah. Well, Does anyone it's... know uh, if any songs, legitimate songs that are not comedy songs, that feature a kazoo in a serious song? I can't think of one. Right. Can you think of is, any? With a kazoo in it. Yeah. I can't think of a of of any. I can't even think of a joke song with a kazoo in it. Name, I can't name think me of one. Any songs? Is it the least represented musical instrument? If you could even call it that, it's got to be honestly. Because I more even of a novelty I, thing. You, you even kazoo. hear like a like a faint triangle in the back of some songs, right? Like it's. I mean, a triangle. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's there's a place for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But kazoo, yeah, I don't think there's a place like a for the of kazoo. A comedy. It's like a, a kind of comedy mu music, isn't it, I suppose? All right, I've actually got the answer right here. What is it? In 1961, Del Shannon's So Long Baby, issued on Big Top Records, featured a kazoo on the instrumental break. Holy crap. Uh, and Jesse Fuller's 1962 recording of his song San Francisco Bay Blues features a kazoo solo, as does Eric Clapton's 1992 recording of the song on MTV's Tears in Unplugged. Heaven. Oh. <laughs> It no, does. San Francisco Bay Man, Tears in Heaven it's would be like so it. weird with a kazoo solo in the middle of it, wouldn't it? It's like this <laughs> any song would really be. serious song, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> like the, just the kazoo. Maybe Radiohead. There's certain instruments that are kazoo. not like ever gonna be cool, like the harmonica, right? Oh, they got like, no my, one. My kids cool. got harmonicas in their stockings as well. Now. Hang on, Lewis. The harmonica what? is a completely different kettle of fish. Okay, so, uh, well, how about the um the the squeeze box, <laughs> the accordion? Well, the accordion. No one looks cool I... with an accordion. Do no, they? they don't look cool. But there have been some pretty good songs featuring the accordion. Accordions um, sound amazing, actually, when they're played. Accordions do sound when played, great. Actually, uh, played true. right. Yeah, I've always it's, a, it's, 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 it sounds actually... like really stereotypical because you kind of associate accordions with the French, right? Like it is, a, it's a very. <laughs> I guess I associate but... the kazoo, the accordion, the harmonica. We these were, things with the one man band. We were on, right? we were on <laughs> some public transportation <laughs> in France mean? one time in Paris. We were visiting Paris, and there was a guy on our uh, train playing the accordion, and it was amazing. Yeah. He was so good. Like it was, he was belting them out, and people were like giving him tips and everything. It was, it was really fantastic. I. I I, I don't mind maybe, an accordion, honestly. I think they're pretty good. I think, well, maybe I'm maybe I'm picking it wrong, but I just that sort of clowny, like with a with a horn under your armpit, and you know you're the symbol between your knees, or like a rubber chicken, like you know on your butt cheeks, and so you could squeeze like like every different part of your body and make like a you're like a honking smashing mess going down the street. Going, yeah, uh, yeah. I just I I it's just too comedy is too clowny like so these instruments like you wouldn't see like drake playing uh the, the you know the kazoo or the no accordion. that's the end of your career if you're cool and you come out playing a kazoo i think that's it. I, I think bill bailey or weird al yankovic can get away with any and they want right. the weirder ones yeah right? they do that's yeah. their it's part of, do you part remember, of their they, they, do you they have a comedy when, uh... slapstick element to them of course. So of if course. you're if you if you are a comedian, then yeah, of course you're gonna look for stuff like that, right? Can you imagine if when Prince came out to do the Super Bowl and played Purple Rain, if instead of playing at the guitar, he'd whipped out a kazoo, a purple kazoo, and played Purple it Rain? It still on the kazoo. would have been it the best been a Super Bowl show fight. ever, because like he, he was so talented, it was insane. Like he could just do he anything. Was, but. It's still a kazoo. It is still I think a kazoo, it kind of yeah. kills the vibe. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's a street cred thing, I think, with, with the kazoo. You have to be able to pull it off. And I don't think, I can't think of one person that who could actually pull it off. Besides maybe oh, Prince, actually. Yeah, I've got, I've, got a, I've got an update just very quickly. We recorded a podcast last week talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. And now all my Twitter feed is filled with is people complaining about Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons. Just to reiterate what I said on Twitter... We recorded that podcast before all these revelations all the news about broke, Wizards yeah. and no, 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 we news didn't. and everything. I, I, no. Did, I had no idea about it. This is why I was like that. Yeah, Lewis, you was, didn't mention Lewis was that. really waxing lyrical about the whole thing. Yeah. No, you said they're shitty and it's a shitty system. That yeah. was your argument. There was no mention of, of this stuff. Yeah, oh, no, this is the new stuff. Well, there's, there's, it was, this has been going on for a while, though. This is not... Something that suddenly happened this week. They've been being shitty for months and worse okay. and worse. But all and I've seen w this week, this was week this is whole them backtracking, thing, though, right? and making it worse. This week, it, 
This week is them getting up in people's faces about basically trying... So the, the, the Wizards of the Coast is owned by Hasbro, which is a yeah. massive mega corp, and they want to monetize people with a monthly subscription through you know, their systems. And they, they want people... They want to hook people in and charge people ever-increasing amount of money for basically nothing. And, you know, and it's kind of, I think, it's gotten over to, got to a boiling point where they've been trying to you know almost like claim ownership over people's homebrew systems and things like this it's almost like you know when you it's like if you like the user end user license agreement in minecraft you know if you make a minecraft mod that belongs to microsoft kind of thing yeah. right that sort of stuff but for D D. and so i think a lot of well, people I, kind I, of... I, yeah in theory but microsoft have made it quite clear that they don't want my nude mod that i made for minecraft <laughs> they don't want anything right. to do with it even though i've tried and tried and tried to get them interested so my mod mingecraft is not popular <laughs> I don't know why. What have I done? Uh, I can't figure it out. Dear Bill Gates, Minchcraft is the future. Here's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've replaced all the in-game assets with pictures of vaginas. <laughs> and uh, the world is now response. a giant woman that you can be <laughs> into. <laughs> Thinking of putting a painting up in your brand new house that you just made? Hope you like pussy. Because this mod is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like oh all, God, the, all the Skyrim mods. That, yeah, pretty that, uh, much. You no, can, you're not wrong. Yeah. It, every Skyrim the sound mod effects would be is, uh, like that. that fucking. Oh my god, you're right about that. Oh my god, the sound effects would be like that mobile phone though on Match of the Day. Yeah. just uh, really crappy Sex sounds. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> whenever you like fall, instead of the oof, it would be. Ah. Oh, did did I tell you guys oh. about the Thomas the Tank Engine fandom? Did we yes. talk about yes. that last week? Yes, I, okay. I believe yeah. so. All right. Uh, it was Good a fascinating Lord. one. Sorry, it's a, it's I, I've a... delved no deeper. I stopped. No, I, 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 yeah, I thought that was one. Good. Good. I haven't. Um... Uh, I was talking to uh, somebody about this yesterday because they were saying that they watched the uh, the John was it John Wayne Gacy, the Gacy or whatever John what's his name the the serial killer right the, 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 the yeah. a, John John Wayne Gacy the, there's sure. a um, there's there's a, like a documentary about about him on Netflix or something like that and then they've got that big series about Dahmer and stuff as well but I, I was mm. like uh, I was saying I think I'm I think I'm serial killered out like as as fascinated as as, as I am by them sometimes it just it, it's just just, it, it's so miserable reading about them and yeah. stuff as well. Like, it's not... Uh, it's awful. It is awful shit. Like, I never want to hear another thing about Jeffrey Dahmer ever again in my whole life. Agreed. Like, he Agreed. is just the worst. Enough with Jeffrey Dahmer. Please don't Jeez. make any more series or documentaries or anything about him. I think the ones that exist are enough to get the point across that he was truly an evil person. And that's it. We don't need more. Like, uh, like just please don't. It's it's it I mean, is I think the worst. You're, you're out of luck here because if it's making money, look at the history oh, channel. I know. I mean, all they make is Hitler stuff know, now. I Hitler's know, greatest cups of coffee. Like that's it's it's, it's anything. <laughs> um, it's anything. Speaking of miserable um, uh, TV watching and stuff, uh, don't talk about the Apprentice. I'm not going to. No, sake. it's on tonight, but I'm not going to talk about it. I was going to okay. say that I watched um, All Quiet on the Western Attractors. Front, the new uh, the new oh. one on Netflix. Oh, that's that was that was watching. It was it was it was really good, but quite miserable as well right like uh yeah i, I could i well, couldn't I, get i couldn't finish it i was I, like it was really war is hell, yeah. I get really it. well like, done just, but yeah war really is hell. Story. holy crap so it, it was just like yeah i get it i get it war is hell well i read the book relatively recently and How's the so book? it was interesting to see how that was changed very different right very different actually yeah partly because the the book is written by a, a, a soldier who was there and, yeah and yeah. it's a German soldier who who fought on the Western Front, and obviously it's his, you know, notes or like recollections, sure. which was obviously slightly, um, slightly kind of censored uh, at the time because it was published just sort of before World War not, II. Uh, not many people that returned from the uh, to from the front, the 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 ones that did, uh, really spoke about it much either. Right? It was like... Uh, I, I got a no. recommendation if you want to know more, Seps. It's a book... Uh, I read this a couple of years ago by a guy called Ernst Junger. Oh, yeah. I've, it's a German book yeah. called Stahlgewitten. Right. Which is Steel steel Thunderstorm. So in uh, in English, it was Storm of Steel. He was a World War One officer fighting for the, the Bosch. And uh, it's like his account of it. It is really unbelievable. It's so good. Yeah. It's a really, really good read. And I recommend that. That, to me... Is far more impressive and important than uh, than this fucking film, which I was just like, I, I just like for one thing, 
the 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 thing is with 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 uh, Storm of Steel, he talks about the fact that when he was in battle and doing it, they were actually fucking elated. Like he's like, there's nothing like it. Really? Yeah. He was like, and this is this is the dark side of it that you don't hear about. And this is my biggest problem with all of these war books. Is like war is hell, and everyone's like, oh, it's so miserable, lying in the mud, and my friend's head is now in my lap. Like, yeah, I get it, I get it. But you're not talking about the fact that some people fucking love yeah. it, and this guy does. He talks well, about it. I think. Um... It touches on it a little bit, but probably not as much as, uh, you know, maybe it's in the book or whatever. Because there, there is like, there is reference to like, you know, people in, in, in the middle of it when they have a little bit of time it's to think. It's an old think, book. And, they sort of, they, so and they're sort of needed. saying, what the hell are we going to do? Like, how am I going to go back to leading a normal life after all this sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, like, yeah. Get me back into the, into the fight. Like, this is, this is me now. But don't you I feel know. like... Like this is, I mean, I, I get it. It's all true stuff, and you talk, you know, a lot of veterans have share the same feelings. And I am not trying to diminish what you guys have experienced. Absolutely not. But I'm talking about it as a film, as a story. I feel like too many war films treat this subject as if we've never before been treated to the fact that war is hell, yeah, and that it pays, it, it has a toll. I know it does. We all know it does. We get it. We've got young people living today who are suffering PTSD from war. Do we need to see another war movie where it's like the young went off, they had no idea what they're signing up for, turns out war is hell, and they lost their friends and now they're changed people. It's like, yeah, I get it. It just feels well, like the I same think story over and, over and over generation, and over again. But a new generation coming through... Uh, yeah. Has it changed anything? These stories have been around anything, forever. It's never though. changed anything. That's my problem. It's never Maybe. changed young people signing up for war no. and having completely the wrong idea about what it's going to be like and then finding out the reality and thinking, I fucked up. What was I thinking? Yeah, yeah. Like, that is such an old story. And But these stories have been around, I guarantee you, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, talking about the regret of a soldier going to war and realizing the bloody reality. It just feels like you, you need new stories. But yeah, you can't sure. just keep doing the same one. Like, no. can you believe it? War is hell. It's like, yeah, I get it. I fucking get it. I that, like I'm just, I'm griping, ones. but that was just how. It I felt. like the military history and like the 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 the, the strategy things. So you're right. They are. There's enough, but then again, there's enough gratuitous violence from John Wick and other things. Right, yeah. right. glamorize being a being a killer. I don't right? want glamour. And all, and all of these Netflix shows glamorizing serial killers. There's plenty yeah, of that yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. right? What like, I'm saying is, if you look at something like Band of Brothers, which was a really legendary TV series and amazing, the, those guys were not spending half an episode just after every fight crying and saying war is hell they had a job to do and they got on with it and it was grim a lot of the time there was a big toll for these guys but they also knew what they had to do yeah. and why they were doing it and i think that was an interesting war story where we had characters like you know who were suffering and couldn't cope with it and then we had characters who were perhaps too into it and we had characters who were trying to mediate everything and keep it together and keep people alive it was fascinating it showed it from multiple different perspectives and it was interesting and it was based on a true story so that made it more interesting i just think if your drama about the war is just going to be war is hell yeah it's you're lacking some depth well there. apparently this is exactly what the problem was with the the we might have talked about this before, but with this, the follow-up season to Band of Brothers, um, the Pacific, the, the Pacific, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. too. And I think a lot of people had that same criticism that it was just too miserable. Yeah, uh, they they forgot that, and I think a lot of people forget that. I think maybe this, maybe in fact, I don't know if this is even true, but Band of Brothers, I think, does have lighter moments with them. You know, yeah. doing something that isn't just sl slogging in mud and, sure. and, and bleeding to death. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 like you know more about the characters. I always felt in the Pacific, all you saw was their hollowed-out eyes fighting this grim war in these Pacific Islands, which I'm sure was absolutely fucking hellish. Yeah, goddamn. But you can't watch twelve episodes of that. No, you know what I mean. You, you just, you just can't. We, we, we're well, saying this the same thing about. Because, yeah. um, we were watching uh, Inside Number Nine yesterday, and like the the yeah, short yeah. story format. I've said before, I really, I really like, but we were, we were thinking about some of them, how, you know, there was maybe some more story to tell and you could almost make it into a series, but then like, how the fuck could you slog through some of these miserable stories, like in a episodic format, you know, like imagine yeah, yeah. watching 12 episodes of the, uh, of the one where the guy works at the volunteer call center. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, like the story could have been fleshed out maybe a little bit more, but nobody's going to sit through 12 episodes of that. Right. It's just like too yeah, miserable. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it, it works. It works perfectly really. Like it's definitely a hard topic. And I see, I think you're right. The war has, has this, it's, it feels it's somewhat irreverent um, or disrespectful to 
make comedy about it. But we obviously did the Dad's Army video on bottle yeah. action. You know, we the people are comparing that to like so people saying it feels more like Mash. You know, it feels more like I mean, Mash was the Korean War, but it's 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 kind of these. There's not many comedies that have tried to tackle these hard hitting events without some little note or message. I mean, Blackadder did it during the during the First World yeah. War. Well, Alo Alo also, didn't, didn't Alo tackle Alo, the, the grim which, realities of the French no, they did. <laughs> exactly. And that was that was an interesting... You stupid women! Yeah. Who's the flashing nubs? <laughs> it was just catchphrases. Oh, man. Yeah. So I, I guess you... I guess you're right. Like, it does feel like... I don't know, like... But then again, it's a classic Oscar bait thing right where hollywood is, wants yeah. to get oscars or get recognition or or create something that they think is maybe sometimes it's it's, it's pet projects as well i think i think every movie is someone's pet project right you've got to maybe, see it yeah right for sure and, well, and like, someone... but, but 1917 was a war movie another world war one war movie but i think they did something really interesting it had an interesting story and it had these these guys having to do this unbelievable thing as you know part of the story and obviously the gimmick, if you want to call it that, was the, the single shot nature of it, which was in very, very technically impressive. And after a while, the, the only thing I'd say is you kind of forget that it's single shot. But it did mean that you stayed with, in this huge mess of a war, you stayed with just these two characters, which was very interesting mm. uh, and very well done. But it, it was interesting because 1917, whilst it had that war is hell kind of thing that all war movies have... That wasn't the focus, and I, I didn't feel like I'd seen it before. I felt like I really wanted to know what happened, yeah. and it had a compelling plot on its own. And that's all I'm saying is that if you're going to make a war sure. movie, it has to have more to it. Yeah. Like Platoon, for example, yeah. um, was a good war movie, uh, and it did have the... I mean, you know, the, the tagline for Platoon was, in, in war, innocence is the first casualty, right? And it was his transformation from this sort of young ingenue uh, sort of soldier who's got all these big ideas coming from college to the grim reality of it. Yeah. But it didn't feel like it was just a war is hell movie. It felt like it was more of a compelling story about the, the fight between good and evil in every soldier. I thought that was that was interesting. Sure. So I'm just saying uh, that was why when you were talking about um, All Quiet on the Western Front didn't do it for yeah. me. Anyway. I, I thought... Um... Yeah, I like I agree um on 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 the points, you know, that it's a story that's been I told and stuff like that. I but think I, I, I think it was I impressively presented at least. Like uh, like I think technically oh, yeah. it was really nicely done. And 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 I just, therefore one thing quite that always laugh, I suppose. One thing that always makes me laugh, it's such a trope in these things. If there's a character wearing glasses, yeah. they're going to die and you're going to find their glasses. I guarantee oh fucking yeah. you. Every single time oh there's a God. bunch of lads in a war and one of them's got specs, the specs cracked, one lens missing. It was his glasses! Yeah. Hans his glasses again! Yeah. How is he going oh, to yeah. see now without his glasses? <laughs> he will not his need to see anymore. His eyes are spread all over his field, his eyes are in little pieces. How is his glasses have survived? It's like, okay, I bet this lad's glasses are going to be How is he going to mud. kiss his girlfriend when his head is in pieces all over this, <laughs> this river? Yeah, I will like, write you a letter. You will send it yourself. No, you must get it back to me. I kind of like. Uh, I like. I like some of the rabbit holes that you end up going down, though, after you watch some of this stuff. Because, like, I it, it just it just uh, made me read more about you know like the First World War and the events leading up right. to it and stuff like that, which I've done before. But um, I don't know. It's just it. History is, I find history, and the older I get, I know I keep saying it, but the older I get, the more fascinated I am by it as well. Like, I don't, I don't know. There's Do you just... suppose, because um, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, that when I was in school, history seemed like the most boring subject yes. in the world to God, me. Yeah. Whereas now I really love reading about history yeah. and I've read all kinds of things. Yeah. And I remember our teachers at the time saying, you guys should read some books about history. You'd love it. And we were like, no, whatever, sir. Yeah. Whereas now I'm thinking, man, yeah, I'd love Give to get back more to school and, books, yeah. and learn this stuff. I prefer... Um, uh, I prefer reading but why about... do we look backwards more when as we get older we tend to look back more I wonder if that's part of it we've got some sense of the past yeah because we were there we have our own past to look back on so that draws us into the, the greater past whereas when you're young you've got no fucking past all you've got is future who cares about history sure when you're 14 I guess you have, so, there yeah. is no history for you for me I'm interested to see like um like I remember like my my generation and being a kid and stuff and I'm always interested to see what led up to that you know like what have led up to the you conditions are, and you're uh, absolutely right by mm. the way about this p flex like how like for us 911 was a huge event right whereas right. to a lot of kids or even like you know 30 year olds they have no that was in the distant past to them that was a different 
different to time. them it's you just know, like that, for us, that old something awful meme with the towers going up and down to yakety sacks right which is like the oldest so you go you you go sips sorry i interrupted no no it's fine it's just honestly for, for anyone listening to the podcast quite often we interrupt each other because there is a slight delay on discord and well, you start talking, case, and then you hear someone case. else. Talk. I didn't I even just, hear. I didn't even hear Sips say anything. I just, I just didn't. know. I wanted Sips to go into a new bit. Go on, Sips. You can't. I can't okay. remember what I was saying now because you interrupted me. <laughs> oh no! Me. Well, that's what good. Then it, that can't have been. It was very important. No, it wasn't. Uh, we got to stop the podcast. It wasn't. Thank you, everyone, uh, for listening this week. It's great to to have you join us. It's great to do, be doing this again. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, new year, new podcast, um, same um, old shit. We're back. Yeah. We love you all. Uh, take care of yourselves and and be good to each other out there. All right. And we will Farewell. see you next time on the field on the <laughs> field of glasses. battle. Bring the glasses, yeah. hands. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> my glasses. <laughs>